you made time for. So let's get into introductions and get this thing rolling. At the top of the screen, Mackenzie Farshid, our Director of Demand Generation. How are you doing today, Mackenzie? Wonderful. It's a beautiful day. Awesome. Thanks for being here. You had my partner in crime, Dave Rosendahl, our president and co-founder, uh, moderating already. He just loves to get you guys excited. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. Excited to be here. All right. Awesome. Thank you. You, you know who I am. I, I hope you noticed that this is a new decade, so I'm without the mustache <laughs> now. You can see from the old picture. Uh, so I'm, I'm loving the, the, uh, the no hair look. All right. And then our good friends and family. We've been working with these guys forever. You can't find a better friend, a better family member, or a better partner. And uh, many of you on this uh, webinar today are here because of them. And that's the GPA team. Uh, at the top, we've got Marianne Gears, our senior vice, the senior vice president of corporate strategy at GPA. Marianne, how are you doing today? Just fabulous, Joe. Very excited for us to be together in this format. It wasn't easy, but I'm really excited you're here as well as Craig Surrett, director of business development. Craig, how are things up in Canada, Toronto? Joe, everything's great up here. So excited to spend time together with you and with the folks who are dialing in. So lots to share. Excited to be here. All right. Awesome. Thank you for being here. First of all, I want to say today we have so much information that we elected to not use our customers as part of today's presentation. But here's the good news. We're going to have a follow on session to this part two, where we're going to invite some of our top partners to speak to you in the not too distant future. I'm hoping that we can get that put together three, four weeks. We'll see how that goes. But there is a part two to this because we're only going to scratch the surface. And today we're going to talk about four key areas that we feel position everybody on this call for the greatest next 12 to 18 months of revenue generation and revenue recovery in the history of our industry. There's going to be the haves and the have nots. And we believe that the examples we show you today are going to demonstrate what the haves are doing and what you can be doing for your customers and prospects. So the first topic is revenue recovery or recovering revenue rapidly. Uh, there's so much pent up demand out there. Then we're going to move into innovation, reimagining everything, the new normal. What is that? When's the old normal coming back? And what should we be doing to help our customers and our companies continue to grow and thrive? We're going to move into emerging industries and applications. And finally, we're going to wrap it up with taking action now. We had amazing questions from everyone. We're going to try to answer as many as possible, but continue to ask the questions as we go through content because we want this to be informative, impactful, and have you leaving the, uh, the webinar with an action plan for ways to start to recover revenue and help your customers. All right, so here's all your questions. We call it a word cloud. Can you see your individual question in there? I'll let you look. Let me know uh, in, in chat if you saw your question. But here's the top five question areas. Number one, print related questions. 30% of a total question, hundreds of questions were around print related uh, areas. The number two area, marketing related questions. How do I do this? What's the best channel? Number three, sales related questions, 22%. Uh, what's the best approach for re-engaging customers and prospects? Number four, emerging verticals and industries, 13% of the questions. And finally, new applications and use cases, 11%. So the content we're going to jump, jump into now is all around those question areas. But first, let's start with something George Bernard Shaw said that uh, really impacts this team on a daily basis. People who say it cannot be done should not interrupt those who are doing it. And, and that's so true. I mean, everybody on this call, we're working incredible hours with our customers and our companies. We're doing it. And in fact, we're helping customers like you transform this period of chaos. So my coaching tip to you today is join us if you're not there yet on the side of those that are doing it. And with that, let's take a look at some of the examples that can help you get there. So starting with revenue, recovering revenue rapidly. What do you see as the best way to market for clients at this point in time? 
So that was just one of the myriad of questions of how can I get re-engaged with my prospects, my customers, and my former customers? What's the best approach for optimizing engagement, leading to those sales appointments you want, those customer meetings, whether they're Zoom meetings like this or some other form? There are some face-to-face -face meetings taking place. And here you see a typical ongoing nurturing program. This is the secret sauce for the companies that are achieving the very best success with their customers in engagement. You see the target segment, that's your customers, prospects, and former customers. You've got that direct mail piece that's so darn important. It has a shelf life, it connects. We've got the email marketing. We're driving them to a personalized microsite where we can find out what's important to them. What's your number one problem or need given where you're at today? the ongoing nurturing touches of ongoing email, and of course, where many of you came today, uh, Facebook ads, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. This is the basic requirements for ongoing nurturing programs to engage your prospects, customers, and former customers that leads to appointments. People raising their hand, downloading content, wanting to learn more about the value that you can bring to them. In fact, there was a study at the end of 2019, it said, in today's world, before your prospect or customer will grant sales an appointment, they want to see three to five pieces of high value content that shows that you've got something of value to help them achieve their business objectives. Remember that data point. We'll touch on that later. So for those of you asking the marketing and sales questions, this is the first step towards more effective engagement. Mac, you got any comments on this? Because you live and breathe this 24-7. Yeah, I think it's really important to, um, you know, people ask, well, why multi-channel? Why opti-channel? Why targeting people in different areas? And especially nowadays with the difference in how people, you know, the, basically the, the utter disruption to their life, things are changing. Their patterns are changing. And so ultimately when you're marketing, the goal isn't just to put outbound marketing out there, right? It's to actually connect with people. And you're going to cast the widest net the more places that you are. So some, so someone who used to always respond to email, well, maybe their attention has diverted to LinkedIn because they're trying new things to get in front of new people. So a direct message on LinkedIn might be better. And so ultimately you want to be casting the widest net to give people the opportunity to respond and engage a in an easy fashion and b in the place that they want to not where you prefer that they respond to you. Beautiful. And even if you're not using our platform or don't plan to, we're more than happy to coach you on these best practice methodologies for success. All right, Dave, you're up. Let's talk about one of our shared customers, GPA and MindFire, that's doing some amazing things. Yeah, so uh, folks, a couple of weeks back, it seems like a year ago, but it was probably only about two weeks ago, we um, had a panel similar to this with uh, Bill uh, doer over at Hatteras, and uh, you see some of their their uh, social media posts here on the screen. And so, Joe, to your point around uh, recovering re uh, revenue and how to do that in a way that's actually going to work in this day and age, uh, what Bill shared with the audience is that they've been doing this uh, quite a bit on social social media, uh, LinkedIn, um, heavily Facebook, and a few other channels as well. And really what you can see that they're doing um, is sharing, you know, how they're helping, how they're helping clients, how they're helping their community, um, how they help their staff, how they're keeping their people safe. And they're communicating that information through a variety of social media posts that are thought provoking and that touch on different aspects of what they do. The other thing that Bill talked about um, is that, you know, it's, it's very important to post this information, to share it and to do it in the right way. But it's also very important to then follow up and follow through on the engagement that we get from these posts. There's a very specific way to do that. Um, so that was, a, that was an interesting conversation. If you're interested in seeing the full panel discussion, we can send you the link to that. If you want to know more about how to kind of do this kind of social engagement that Bill's talking about, we can talk to you further about that as well. But it's important right now for all of you who are thinking about how to recover revenue and how to do that quickly, you must com continue to communicate. You must continue to communicate. If you think you're doing it too much, then you're, then you're just getting started. You're just about getting it right, okay? Because it's gonna seem repetitive, it's gonna seem like a lot, but if you follow in the footsteps of Bill and others who are doing this well, you're going to see that they do it quite a bit because it's a busy world, it's noisy, and you gotta stand out and get attention. So I thought that was an interesting thing to share, Joe, um, from what we picked up from Bill. 
Yeah, spot on. And again, a shared customer, both GPA and MindFire. So you can learn from that. All right, let's turn it over to our GPA family members. Guys, you're up. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Dave. No, exactly right. Everything that you said about uh, our friends at Hatteras, you know, they're, they're just benchmark in, in terms of what they do. And, and maybe if we get a little more specific uh, with, with the print uh, organizations, right? They're out there. There's other benchmark groups like uh, Vomera, um, uh, C2, there's ARC. There's just guys that really embrace this. Here are the things that we see as common threads for, for, uh, for those that are leading, right? So um, they, they understood that when we say revenue recovery, it's not necessarily that they're looking for the revenue that they had 10 weeks ago or 11 weeks ago. We're all hoping for that, for sure, for sure. But things have changed in the meantime. They've picked up that, uh, that the market has moved, that they've had to adapt their businesses, and they're embracing what is trending and trending hard right now. And, and these guys are, are particularly good. Uh, what we thought we'd do is we'd shine a light on a, another really great customer of ours. Uh, they, they'd like to, to be uh, to keep anonymous for reasons that will be very apparent, uh, but just showing them as a, as a case example of really embracing change and getting after that revenue recovery that, uh, that Joe's talking about, right? So here's a group, they were dominant, just dominant in their vertical. They were specific to a, a vertical market. That vertical tanked in, in the COVID market, tragic but true. But this group understood that in terms of revenue recovery, sitting on hands was not gonna get them what they need, where they needed to go, right? So what they did, they did two fundamental things. One, they changed their business model. They literally, literally created a new business entity, went online under a different brand. They didn't want to signal to their core customers and their core market that they were abandoning because they're not. They need that to come back. But they created this new business entity and they crafted themselves as a COVID print solution specialist. They trained their team. They marketed. They put products out in market. And through the last 10 weeks, they've become a, a leading dominant provider in that space. The point would be not only did they do that, right? They also recognize the dynamics. They had a customer, right? That was a national brand, but had no capability in floor and window graphics. And they stepped up, they got together and became a print service provider to that national brand, their reach, their capability. And they didn't do anything new. They, they, they weren't really a, a big player in floor graphics. They have Indigo, they got iGen, they have a compliment. They took that same product set, right? They looked at the tool, they looked at, at what was trending and in demand, they created their own business entity and they reached for partners. Net, net, these guys are up 15% on the year. And, and to me, this is all about adapting, being bold and taking action. Those would be our thoughts. Awesome, thank you. All right, with that, perfect segue to innovation, reimagining everything. Yeah, perfect. Um, so folks, those of you who are here, as I look through the attendee list and um, there's, there's quite a number of you here, I see a lot of you are business owners, um, you're in sales, you're entrepreneurs, you're revenue minded in some way. And in order to drive revenue right now, this kind of touches on what Craig just mentioned a second ago, as a panel, what we argue that you need to think about doing is innovating in a way that's going to provide new solutions to your customers. This crisis represents a unique opportunity to do that because there's virtually no playbook for us, right? And so we have an opportunity to reimagine everything. And so here's what I want to pose to the panel, to, our, to the, uh, the folks that are here today. I want you to give us, if you can, um, like a, a, an insider's view into what you're seeing, uh, GPA folks specifically, of you know, the new interesting revenue generating applications that you're seeing from your clients in the industry. Tell us what you're seeing, how folks are applying them, um, kind of what the trends are, because I know a lot of the audience here are looking for new revenue and must innovate in these areas in order to do that. So I think Marianne and Craig, let's start with you. What are your thoughts on that? Ladies first, do you want to tee up, Marianne? No, absolutely. And, and if you want to hit the next slide, Joe, I think that'll, that'll help us uh, tee into it. So we're seeing lots of new uh, and different things happening. Uh, the fun part about it is, um, as, as Dave said, everything is open um, and everything is, is possible. Um, we're seeing everything from, you know, how do you keep that six feet distance? Uh, so many different ways, 3D ways, uh, printed way. Um, materials that we thought we weren't going to sell, we are selling. Uh, as a matter of fact, we can't keep it in inventory. Craig, you want to talk a little bit about some of these uh, these new fun things that are going on that we're seeing? 
Yeah, for sure. And, and uh, we'll definitely delve into that. Um, just, uh, Dave, on, on your question, you know, I think for a lot of us, folks are just so tired. Like they're saying, you know, this COVID thing's been around. It's only been 90 days, but I'm so tired yeah. of windows, walls, floors. But you know what? Don't buck the trend. That is what's going on. And there are innovations. There are innovations inside those 90 day old applications, but we are seeing some interesting things like branding and interesting new executions, things like that. But don't buck the trend. What's driving right now, window graphics, floor graphics, and it's not just, hey, keep back. They're now turning promotional. And, and we, we're seeing leading brands start to, and Marianne's gonna to touch on this. We're starting to see some real innovation about how people are executing and some unique twists on business models. Stop. And Craig, when you say promotional, you mean, drawing people back into these locations? Got to, got to do it, dude. You, you, okay. You're exactly right. Um, there, there's a stat that we're going to share. We might as well hit it now. 60% of consumers are sitting on the sidelines, right? They're sitting on the sidelines. They're waiting to come back in, but they're scared to come back, right? And there's these innovative print solutions that are opening the gateway, opening the path for folks, you know, making their way back into the economy. Here's some great examples right here. So we, we thought that we'd shine a light on things like the, the seat belt seat wrappers, right? So what, what's this all about? I'm gonna say sports, but don't think just sports, think hotel, think casino, think airport, think everything, right? We mm. have to get back into the economy safely. Here's a fun, inventive way, even branding opportunities that, that uh, allows us to go back into the stadiums and, and we will, right? But we're gonna do it first safely and at social distance. And these are the green shoots of applications. I'll guarantee you one thing. These just hit the market, I don't know, in the last 30 days, maybe not even. Right, I'll bet you when we get together in another 90 days, these have evolved and they've been embraced by market. But the challenge then is to everybody on the, uh, on the call today, look at this. This is not the answer, it's a spark of an idea. Where are you gonna take these ideas? What are you gonna make with your customers and respond to those demands and tweak it for wherever you're playing, whether it's a yep. theater, whether it's a concert, where it's whatever. That's a, a big takeaway there. On these, all right, maybe some of you have seen this. When, when we got together, oh shoot, I'm gonna say it was a month and a half, two months ago, we, we did a webinar uh, related to this and we shot a light on some really cool stuff happening. Yeah, we all get labels, right? And, and what we showed at the time was Papa John's. And, and this isn't just label, this is peace of mind. And, and I mean that, this is real peace of mind where Papa John's two months ago came out and said, hey, you know, everybody's concerned, everybody wants to make sure that their, their food is, is safe and and, uh, and that we're, res we're respecting the social distance. And so they had a safety seal on every pizza box going out. Look where we're at today. Look how this has evolved into some mainstream travel segments. And it's the same darn thing. While it's a label, what it's really communicating is clean and safe. And again, folks on the call, this isn't the end of the game. This is your spark to go, huh, well that never existed 45 days ago, 30 days ago. What, does this apply to my customer base? Where, where does this benefit? It's all about getting that consumer back into the economy, whether it's travel, pizza, food, whatever. And what are the tools in print that can help convey that? That's what's going to spark the economy. That 60% returning to active parts of our economy. That's what's going to drive us. This is neat. And we'll see this evolve. We got another one too. If we just go to the next slide, we thought it was kind of cool. There is a, there's a truth underneath that um, for, for consumers to feel good about coming back, they have to not only feel clean and safe, they have to have a good experience. And if they don't, they're gonna get scared. And if they're scared, they're gonna stay home. If they're staying home, the economy's not gonna take traction. All right, so what are we doing? We're doing great. We're not taking away from the floor graphics, right? We're not taking away from the window graphics. They're here until 2021, I promise you. But it's these kind of executions, these three dimensionals, things at eye level, that gets more consumer engagement, understanding and compliance. And that's gonna help those folks that are hesitant to return to the, to the economy, to the, to the grocery stores, to the other places, the more comfortable they feel and have a positive experience, they're gonna come back, that's what we need. It's inventive tools like this that help people to adapt, comply and return to, to regular activity. That's why for this month, we thought these three were kind of cool. These three dimensionals, the labels, and yeah, those those seat wraps. We thought those were pretty cool for sharing this time around. So Yeah, very cool. And before we, I think, Marianne, you're going to chime in here in a second. What I'd like to know from everybody who's here, all a uh, few hundred of you that are here, which of these ideas are sparking something for you? I love the word that Craig used. We use that internally a lot, being mind fire and all. 
Um, we want to know what sparked an idea here. So which one of these use cases, which one of these creative applications for print and communication has given you an idea? Go drop that in the chat. And uh, let's go back to you now, Marianne. Uh, talk to us about your view on what you're seeing here. Hey, Dave, can I just make a point real quick on what Craig just said before Marianne jumps in? Uh, one of the things interesting about the, uh, the uh, car rental and the hotel, if I'm a brand that's doing that and creating a high, heightened level of comfort and safety, what about the brands that are not doing it? Are they at a competitive disadvantage? And if you're a print sales rep that offers these type of products and you want to gain an appointment, all you have to do is pick out any one of those brands that's not doing it and pick up the phone and say, you're at a major competitive disadvantage in today's world. There's a sales tip for you. All right, Marianne, it's all about you. Absolutely. Thanks, Joan. If you want to go ahead and flip to the next side, you know, Mackenzie said it earlier. She talked about going and marketing to where people are and channels are changing a little bit. And we're starting to see some old applications really being updated and becoming popular again. Cool. My favorite is direct mail. And I'm telling you right now, um, there was so much excitement in early March uh, when I beat my husband. We're both working from home to the mailbox. This is the only venue uh, that I'm getting anything new uh, because I watch Netflix, Amazon Prime. I'm sure you guys are all doing that. There's no real commercials there. And I opened it up and there was this beautiful catalog sitting in there and beautiful direct mail. So, you know, we used to think those of us in the printing industry and marketing that, that direct mail was kind of so-so. Well, guess what? It's on a resurgent. It's in starting to turn on and you've got to reach them just like Mackenzie said where they are. We'll talk a little bit about value engineering, uh, how that's working, uh, paper or plastics. Um, you know, we talked about floor graphics and traditionally those were only seen indoor. Well, guess what? When we talk about the things like the seat wraps uh, and other things like that, there's going to be venues that are gonna be outdoor and we're gonna to have to put social distance graphics down. And there's some new products that are out right now that are specifically for those uh, applications. Joe, if you want to uh, pump a slide for me, I've got a couple pictures. So two things, I talked a little bit about catalogs and, and what's interesting right now, even though the unemployment rates are very high, the predominance of that are people that work in the hospitality industry, right? But there's still segments of the market that are working, collecting paychecks and they really don't have anywhere to go. So on the right, uh, what I got excited about in March That's was- That's my favorite. That's my yeah. favorite catalog. <laughs> Yeah, I got excited about that, Mackenzie, because um, I knew that that was planned before COVID, right? So that was in the works, came out in March. What's interesting is, and Mackenzie, you probably got it too, there was another catalog that came in just last week from them. And um, what they're seeing is that people want to invest in their homes, want to invest in new things, and they're looking for new things. So this was exciting because for a while, catalogs were dead. Uh, on the left, uh, very, very interesting. Um, everybody knows I'm big into my sports and I love my water sports. Uh, right now, boat dealers, camping equipment, uh, VBRO, nobody can keep this stuff in inventory. You can't keep boats in inventory right now. You can't keep camping beer, gear. People are considering other avenues to spend their money. So my big 30-year uh, wedding anniversary trip to Europe uh, got canceled. Uh, so what are you going to do with that? You're going to spend it somewhere else. So we're seeing a lot more investment uh, in these areas and these markets. So think about it. So it's not just the home gyms, um, the art supplies that we saw earlier. Now everybody wants to get outdoors and they still want to be socially distant, but there's ways to do it. Yeah, and you know what, um, just as we jump onto this slide, you know, I, I was listening to what Marianne was saying. We were talking before getting on this call. And I was a little jaded going, yeah, is that really true? You, you think, and I was talking to my wife last night, and, and it is, you know, don't, don't mark it through the lens of your own glasses. You, you got to look broadly. It is a very fragmented uh, economy out there, especially now. And just in chatting with my wife last night, she has a number of friends who are, are making luxury purchases right now. So even though it's a, a funky economy, right, there's a lot of activity at all levels. And that takes us to value engineering. And no, 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 this is not about slashing prices. It's about having a, a heads up game when you're looking from the print side at what you're offering. And the story goes like this. Um, I went to school learning the likes of what Joe Manos preaches, right? This is about revenue recovery rapidly, but he, he also implied, and we'll say it here, you're going to do it 
without giving up margin. Because at the end of the day, it, it's all about the bottom line, right folks? So we see this trend coming. It, it, it's an issue we're gonna manage into the end of 20 and, and into 21 that we have to watch for, right? And that's where, depending on the, the sector, right? And the pieces of business that, that you're enjoying, right? there might be some pressure. Do not assume that any of the applications that are coming back are gonna be exactly the same. Hopefully they are, but if they're not, right, heads up fall. You gotta be thinking, and, and this from a mill, a leading mill like GPA, just a reminder folks, right? For most offerings, we have a good, a better, a best. And so as you're returning to those applications of volume, those that are really important, you wanna be engaged with your customers, leading with solutions and, and just uh, solidifying. Is it the same or are there new constraints? And if the answer comes back, there's price pressure, right? Heads up ball. You have options that, you know, and I'm not saying anyone in, in print is lazy, but sometimes we get a little complacent. It is what it is. In this economy, you cannot afford to make that leap. You must be bringing solutions and alternatives. Solidify that it's the old application the old way. And if not, before your competitor does, make sure you're bringing out those solutions. There is a good, better, best, and maybe in, in particular parts of the economy, maybe you're gonna have to look at alternative solutions, but don't give up that margin, right? Heads up ball, no complacency. That's the name of that song. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back over to Marianne, I think. Is that where we're going or is it me again? We'll go next slide, please. Ah, it's me again. <laughs> All right, well, we'll just do a little play on what we said before. All right, so um, this, this uh, slide could equally be titled uh, paper or plastic. So we just talked a lot about paper and that's awesome, right? So I'll tell you a quick story about this one. So um, about uh, beginning of May, uh, the uh, end of April, the um, Restaurant Association of America came out and said, all right, here's what we need to do to get back. And uh, particularly for menus and other things that are touched by public and staff, you got a choice kids. One, paper, disposable, or two, plastic. And it was really uncertain what was gonna happen in this last month. It's clear that paper won. Why? Well, because for a lot of it, the, the restaurants themselves had a much reduced menu and things were changing fast. Costs changing like crazy. Just easier to have a one and done print menu and off it goes. What's the message behind it? These are still important brands. Just because it's disposable menu and paper doesn't mean it's commodity grade. Sure, that's part of it. But what we learned was, you know, there's a variety of different papers. Hey, printers, Make sure you're offering a suite of solutions. Brands are important. Make sure that you're doing that. So that's lesson one on paper. But now on the plastic side, we see plastic menus. And again, this is an, an indication of what's happening in other sectors of the market. So don't think we're just talking restaurant. So we're seeing a lot of, of, um, of surge in, in uh, synthetic solutions. Why? Because you can clean them. Every document now, whether it's retail, whether it's hotel, you have to have sanitizable documents, right? And that's where plastics will play. So what's the moral of this story? Again, what, what you did before 10 weeks ago might come back the same as it is. But what you might think about is when it comes to digital synthetics, you have options. Word to the wise. Maybe you had it on a, a 14 point. Maybe what you do if you're under pressure, you propose bringing that down to 11 mil to maintain your margin, bring more value, right? Because they're under pressure, you can offer some cost savings, but also by tweaking it, going to a different synthetic, a different caliper, right? Just smart solutions. Don't take anything for granted. Be creative, be aggressive, be bold. And as Joe Manis will always say, take action, All right? So there you go. That's uh, paper and plastic. You have the restaurant association, but what's true here, true everywhere else. We see a, an attendee says that they've done roughly 750,000 menus in the last five weeks. Um, we have other people saying that they're doing um, antimicrobial, antivirus substrates. Um, they're talking about laminations, you know, on plastic. And yeah, so it sounds like the audience is really resonating with this. And some of the other examples we're going to look at later in the presentation for restaurants, some of the signage, uh, I know the numbers have been off the charts, uh, and there's a whole lot of uh, additional opportunity in that area, to say the least. For sure. And, you know, things that are happening, and, and Craig talked about it a little bit earlier. So we all saw the tape on the floor, the please stand here. Um, all the what I call version one, version two of four graphics, um, because they are going to be everywhere. Now what we're starting to see, and here's a great opportunity for all 
customers on this call, whether you're an agency or a printer, is to go and talk to the brands about how they can utilize this space to market their brand. So, I mean, surfaces are everywhere. We've talked about that for years. You know, walls and windows were always kind of the big things. And now the, now the big thing is floor. So I love it to the right, uh, typical things that you would see in a, in a grocery store. But now what's gonna happen is universities are opening, schools are opening. Um, there's all kinds of places that have to consider and think about what that's gonna be. And uh, for those of you who know that I'm really from Ohio and I'd rather see all Ohio State Buckeye things all over the ground, all across Ohio. There's lots of colleges, universities, uh, and places where their sports brand is equally as important as what the university does itself. So, you know, consider this and think about it. And these versions are not forever. The thing I like about point of purchase or floor graphics is we always use the word they're temporary. They're up for a couple months and it's time to change it out. So if you're a printer, think about this as a revenue stream for your customers. So what's in the fall sports? Maybe it goes from footballs to hockey pucks to basketballs, um, whatever it is, consider that as a, a ever churning revenue stream. Joe, you want to go to the next slide? You know, lastly, we talked about this in our last one. We're seeing the, the plastic screens everywhere, right? Um, they're everywhere, plexiglass. And one of the first things we saw happening was uh, without labels on them, people were running into them. So first they were a safety issue. Um, now what's happening, if you look to the right, is now they're places for, for uh, uh, information. So this one says we care about your health and safety. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be the only messages we're going to see. Um, Mackenzie, I was at Ikea, Ikea, just opened in Ohio last week, and my first stop was to Ikea. And it was so great to see they had all kinds of information for me up on their panels. Uh, and I think we'll see that in the future. Uh, anywhere there's a surface, there's a place to market or brand. Yeah, I actually there. saw yesterday, this was crazy, um, a workout facility. They did a group class and they could all go back, but they didn't, they wanted to social distance. So the actual workout facility created individual pods out of the plat, out of those. And literally the teacher is in the front and then each of the different, everyone has their own pod with the equipment and they had signage around the top of it, which I thought was really cool. So that when you lot, when you sign in, it says your pod is, you know, here you go in there, your sanitized equipment is in there. So, I mean, I'd never seen anything like that. Yeah. I'm picking yeah. Up on, I think that that's just super. And the point is, and, and you hit it so well in the gym, anywhere there's Plexi, Plexi is going to be around whether we like it or not. It's going to be into 2021. It is what it is. All those spaces, um, whether it's you know at casino, it's in a gym, it's wherever. Um, all those spaces will have an opportunity. There will be messaging. There will be messaging, and and there's the opportunity that we throw to the print community on this call. How smart are we to think about solutions we can bring? Don't expect the orders to come in. This is we're gonna, we're going to have to be aggressive taking these solutions and and uh, and developing them with our customer base. So get aggressive, get out there, and get messaging. And ultimately, you're helping them save their business, right? Because if they don't do these things, people are going to choose other facilities. You know, if you have a choice to go to a gym that actually has those uh, safety precautions in place versus one that doesn't, you're going to go to the one who does. So it's not like, you know, sometimes we get stuck in this rut of, well, I'm a sales professional reaching out, telling them these things, you know, and you think about, well, maybe they don't want to hear from me again. But in this case, you're literally providing them an opportunity to save their business, you know, so you're really, you're providing a solution that's going to impact their bottom line. Yeah, so, so well said, Mackenzie. And, and, and when we think about this, the other thing, and we talk about print saving the economy, we've got to generate the economy by getting people to come out and spend their money, but do it in a way that they feel safe and com yep. comfortable. You know, Craig calls 2020 the year of the scarf, but I think that's a Canadian thing. Uh, you know, in the U.S., we're not so big on our scarves, but what we are big on um, our face masks and, and, and things that, and ways to do it. What I love about it is many of our printers, the most uh, innovative ones that we have, especially our online ones that go B to C, are looking at coming up with ways to personalize face covering. So I love the one on the left, you know, the Rolling Stones. How are you going to go to a concert? Why are you going to go there? What would be better than having, you know, it branded? Um, again, I'm big into uh, college football. So, you know, you've got the different things that they put in there. So what if there's a section where it's, 
all scarlet face masks and one that's gray and you're doing the wave. I mean, think about that and help these brands and these companies uh, understand the revenue stream. The one in the middle, still always my favorite, that comes to us from our friends uh, over at Superior Packaging over on the East Coast. This is a made out of paper, recyclable board. Um, it's a one-time disposable sneeze shield because really it's all about the sneeze and the, the transferring of it. So why wouldn't you want that branded available for your customers to pick up, put on almost like a 3D glass type of thing, but from your nose and your face on down at the end of the event, it goes recyclable and it's a generating revenue stream. You know, like Joe Mano says, we got to continually generate it. So Joe, on to you guys and Dave. Oh, All right, no, so wait. Yeah, I was going to say, well, yeah, one more thing here, Joe. We Maybe. talked about it as a group about, uh, you know, one of the things that we were missing. And, and uh, we're blessed at GPA to be part of a global group. Um, we've got a big uh, Facebook work, workplace community. And one of the things I've been watching is all around the, the globe, they're talking about businesses that are restarting and businesses that are. And what I want to remind everybody, and, and Joe, you can comment to it, um, there's pieces of business that maybe started in February or March that might have been put on hold. Yep. I'm going to ask you to pick up the phone today and go back to those customers and ask them, hey, what about that project? There you Joe, go. I know you, you have a comment about that, I'm sure. I do. I have two uh, major projects for a couple of our partners. One's for uh, about 600, 700,000 direct mail pieces with a companion uh, email and a BCC email, very cool application. Uh, and it died uh, 60 days, 90 days ago. And uh, out of nowhere, the financial services company said, we gotta get back, we gotta get this thing going. So our customer called us and said, it's back on, we gotta get it out in 10 days. So, uh, you know, to Mary Ann's point, we talked about this in our pre-meeting a couple of days ago. Uh, your coaching tip is pick up the phone, call the projects you knew about, but why not flip the script, call your prospects and customers and say, hey, it's back to business. We're in the revenue recovery business, helping you get your revenue back. What project were you thinking about that you put on hold that I can help you with? There's your coaching tip for today. I guarantee you that you will get an order or two from that. If you don't call me, it was bad implementation. I'll help you with that too. <laughs> there you go. Sure. So if you want to flip the slide, so we talked about this uh, the other day as a group when we were together. And yesterday, this hit my newsfeed. Uh, and for all of you that are in uh, printing and marketing, um, $200 million marketing blitz by McDonald's. Uh, go and read the article. Find me on LinkedIn. It's there. Um, what I like about this is the fact that, first of all, there's two projects that they were working on in front of COVID that they stopped. The first one was the chicken sandwich war. So you guys know between Popeyes and the chains that they were fighting, McDonald's wanted to be in there. Uh, and so McDonald's piloted it earlier in the year, put it on hold, and they announced this yesterday that they're going to go ahead and start the campaign. The other was in the arena of breakfast baked goods. So um, it was so timely when we got this. You guys get a chance, uh, again, go into LinkedIn, find it. Um, super, super important that the brands are now saying, hey, I got to, you know, I've got to spend that money and I got to find that generation. This is going to generate a ton in advertising and printing. I know it. It's it's things on the outside of the restaurant. It's everywhere. Beautiful. You know, for a lot of our printers, and these are questions that we've heard uh, not only in this webinar or before, a lot of times you guys want to create presentations or things for your customers. Um, just a little shout out um, that on our social media platforms, I know Mackenzie came after me and said, hey, where do you have a library of uh, uh, all these different things? Um, we've got really four different platforms. Uh, they're curated uh, images of things that you could use. Um, some are divided up by packaging and applications and things like that. Uh, but go check it out again, as, as Mackenzie said earlier, take a look at all these different platforms that are available and we have things there for you guys to use. Awesome. All right, Dave. Let's talk about some of these applications that are going to help these customers recover their revenue. Yeah, absolutely. So question for everybody here. Um, go over to the chat. How many of you right now or maybe uh, pre-COVID were servicing restaurants? 
And uh, if you're like me, I can't spell the word restaurant. Don't know how to spell it. So go drop the word food if that's you in the chat. I want to know who works with restaurants. Um, if you're on Facebook, do the same. I see Kim and, a, and Robert over there and a few others. So drop the word food. I want to see how many. All right, we got foodies coming in here. Here's why I ask men and women. Keep those coming in so we know who you are. We've noticed um, four things about this industry, working with our clients and our, and our partners, uh, printers, agencies, uh, retail locations. This particular industry, the food industry, has been hit hard, obviously. And many of those organizations, many of those companies, uh, small, medium, and even large, were ill-equipped to handle online digital orders. Um, and so many of them were unable to use their, um, you know, the, these, these providers that are out there that enable online ordering for food and, and uh, restaurant locations in particular, because those solutions really gouge them on their margins, um, that the fees are expensive, the costs are high, and it's not easy to do business with those solutions. Also, what we found um, is that a lot of them ended up in a situation where because they didn't really have a good solution for communicating with their customers, they just couldn't keep communication open. They couldn't tell them about how they were going to offer curbside ordering. Just a whole host of issues. So kind of a big problem that, that we started to see in that, in that space. And so what we did to help our customers, to help folks like you and this industry on the holes, we created, and this is kind of a picture of it over here on the right, what we call an opti-channel blueprint or recipe that enables you, if you're a service provider, if you're doing any of these um, type, any of this type of work, I see a bunch of people who say they're working with this, this industry, you can now help restaurants do a few things. Number one, create an online menu or, or like a storefront where people can go, go and order um, the food that they want. Um, second, you can use tools to drive those folks to purchase uh, for, for, for a very reasonable transaction fee what we're finding is that if you can enable these locations, these restaurants to be able to sell their services online electronically, that helps the industry tremendously, gets your foot in the door, and you can now start to sell them additional print services and other things um, that they need as well. Now, the other interesting thing here is because this is done online, if folks don't buy the food, let's say they go and they visit that, that menu, that electronic menu, we have the technology to help you find out who those people are meaning we can enrich that anonymous info and find out, oh, it's actually Marianne who's interested. And now with the OptiChannel technology, we can go out after her with a direct mail piece or with an email or something that's going to get her back to the location or back online to place that order. Um, so this is a very powerful workflow. What you're seeing here on the screen, incorporating print, uh, direct mail, uh, voice communication, so automated voice communication, chat, mobile, social, email, et cetera. Um, and we think that this is going to be something that a lot of locations desperately need. We're already seeing quite a bit of activity within our customer base here. Uh, in fact, just the other day, I heard from one of our team that somebody who's invested, hasn't even invested in the marketing aspect of this yet. So $0 invested in marketing uh, generated $800 in sales within a few days using this kind of workflow. That might not seem like a lot to you, or maybe it does. But if, if the organization is struggling and needs revenue, that's a big deal. They just turned it on and these orders started to come in. So... If you're interested in finding out more about that, I'll drop some more info here in the chat in just a second. But this is a, this is a really um, interesting use case in an industry that needs a lot of help. Um, so this is something to definitely keep on your radar. Now, Joe, I know that in addition to finding kind of this hole in the market, we also found other interesting areas where COVID has impacted face-to-face -face events and, and things like trade shows, obviously everyone's aware of. But tell us more about what you're seeing there that's also an interesting opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, here's one example of an event marketing program to get people to the event. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously there's not going to be a lot of events right now. This one was run right before uh, COVID. So what we came up with was an integrated virtual event program. We know that uh, when you execute the right approach, for whether it's a meeting like what we're doing today or a two-day virtual event where people are visiting via Zoom, that when you execute using the best practices that we've developed over the last 14 years, you're gonna see two to four times the number of RSVPs. Imagine if you're talking to one of your customers about helping them with this need. Two to three times the show up rates, and this is even including uh, sessions that go you know, 90, 120 minutes. So again, using the the right application with the right tools, 
you can do some amazing things. And at a high level, what we've done is taken a very complex uh, program and simplified it as easy as one, two, three. You get your target audience of recipients that you want to attend. You have the invitation channels, the registration microsite that creates a unique personalized link like you received for this event, and then the confirmation of follow-ups. Thank you, you're registered, Joe. We look forward to seeing you on the 31st and also send a lead to your customer. And as you can see, comprehensive channel management and opportunity management. And again, it doesn't matter, matter what go to meeting application you're using, Zoom, go to webinar, uh, WebEx, whatever, the solution gives you that ability to link to those and create a very dynamic, personalized, highly personalized and optimized process to drive more people to the webinar or to the virtual event, which we've seen a major increase. I have one of my customers working with a large financial services company, and you've probably received these direct mail pieces inviting you to a dinner, you know, at Ruth Chris, and they want to educate you on new dynamic changes taking place, and they want your money. Well, guess what? That may not be happening, so these events, they're going to deliver the Ruth Chris dinner to your home, and then they're going to execute the event like this. So again, wonderful idea that this is the new normal, ladies and gentlemen, so if you need help, let us know. Okay, so now we're going to segue to the next section, Emerging Industries and Applications. And uh, so a couple questions that jumped out at us were, I want to know which emerging markets are now print hungry? What industries will drive the print volume moving forward? So with that, let's talk about some of the top emerging markets. And I'm going to turn over to our GPA friends first. Yeah, thanks, Joe. So uh, picking up on that, as, as we were coming into this uh, meeting together, the MindFire team, GPA team, we, we compared notes. We've got customers, some shared, some not. But, but these are the sectors that all of us are, are seeing move and move now, right? And, and we'll bring it back. From the print side, there's some common denominators, and we'll just set that out, right? So uh, fundamentally, uh, all these guys, they, they need to uh, engage with their customer base. They need to encourage and entice the consumers back into the economy. We talked about that today, right? And we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit deeper. But the part two of it is, Right? For all of these folks who are coming back to, if you look at these, these are all physical spaces. Every one of these has that safe return requirement, right? As, as consumers or users, or kids going back to school, as they all return to these spaces, it has to have that clean and safe aspect. And that means from a print point of view, a lot of the solutions that we were talking about come to play. Plexiglass for some, social distance floor graphics, Window communications and, and things like what Marianne was talking about, those that will establish the message, but also in some of these spaces, maybe there's a branding opportunity, a, a potential revenue generating opportunity. So as we looked at these, here's what you need to know, folks, and we really are encouraging some, some feedback from, uh, from the audience. These are the markets we see moving now. Why? Either they got green lighted, there's pent up demand. Um, there, there's just fundamentals in the economy where these are starting to open up. These are on their way, fragmented as it is, but these are on their way. But each of them in this challenging COVID market, even with the solutions we mentioned, well, they, they got challenges, right? They got challenges on the way. We're print, we're creative, we're smart. So we thought maybe we'd open up and have some conversation. What are some of the solutions that we're talking about? Maybe some others that might be applicable. And maybe if we pick off one, like say casino, Mary, I'm gonna call you out. With the conversations we've been having uh, and, and all the solutions that we're, we're flagging here, well, when, when we say casino and the challenges that they have, right? There's only 34, if I remember my stats right, 34 of a thousand are open right now. And, and really it's just the VIPs that are coming back. What are solutions that come to mind for you from a print point of view that folks on this call should be thinking about if they've got a casino customer? What, what are you thinking? Uh, you know, one of the big things that I know our team from MindFire will love this is there's always, uh, always direct mail campaigns to bring in the high rollers and the, and the regulars. Um, and we've talked about that. And, and I think people are going to be excited to know that their favorite casino is open and they need to be lured back in. So I, I would say that that's one, you know, inside and within the casino, you know, we've talked about all those clean and safety um, applications that are there. 
but you know, even go beyond that, you know, uh, I thought QR codes were dead. Um, and QR codes are not dead. Uh, they're, they're back and they're actually, they're, they're usable. Uh, I used one the other night, there was a graphic on the, uh, the tabletop and it was a, basically a, a vinyl stuck to it, almost like a counter, a counter mat. And uh, I thought, oh God, this is gonna be terrible. I'm never gonna be able to get the menu and I'm starved. And it, you know, with a blink of an eye, uh, it was there. So in the casinos, you know, I'm gonna see a lot, I think there's gonna be a lot of that and a lot of that kind of interactive multi-channel marketing going on because again, it's a revenue stream and they're gonna to wanna to try to get it. So that's my thoughts. Mackenzie or David, I see a lot of heads nodding or Joe. Yeah, I, I was just going to say, um, you know, we could spend hours on this section just, just because of the time limit we have today. We're only going to be able to give a glimpse, but we'll certainly be happy to follow up with you. But one thing that's universal across all of these is that uh, there has to be a critical ability to connect with your target audience in a highly personalized manner with special offers to re-engage them. So pick any one of those vertical markets that's at the top of the list. The double challenge with higher education is there's a question whether or not students are going to be back on campus. So that means virtual everything and digital. So as you can see, each of these is a massive opportunity for revenue growth for you to help each of these verticals uh, achieve success. Dave, how about you from your corner or Mackenzie? Any, any thoughts that you'd like to chime in with? Yeah, I mean, just earlier this week, or maybe it was last week, uh, you know, we do have quite a bit of, of customers uh, picking on the casino industry here um, that were pretty much dried up, uh, no, nothing going on. And uh, the good news is, though, over the last about two weeks or so, uh, they're coming back. And a lot of that digital marketing, exactly what you're describing, uh, both digitally as well as through your mail, is picking back up, and they're going after it hard. Um, hopefully we see that elsewhere. And, and for the, those of you who are on the call, you're also seeing that, um, banking and financial services. We have a lot of financial services, customers, uh, mortgage, uh, credit unions, things like that. We're also seeing an uptick in activity there. Joe, I think you mentioned one of those examples a, min a minute ago as well. So there's certainly pockets that are now starting to pick up direct mail, digital email, social ads, all sorts of things that they're starting to do to bring people back in. Yeah, I was I was uh, recently grocery shopping actually last weekend, and it's in a in a strip mall. So there's other organizations there. I think there's an Old Navy and a, a makeup company. And previously, when I would had for the past few months, I've gone there. Everything was completely dead, but now everything is back open. And I've seen them turn their parking lot into a full blown. I mean. The, the makeup store has an entire row. And when you go there, it has basically a big sign, which is another big opportunity, a sign saying your slot number is one, call this number, tell us you're at one, and we will bring it out to there, you. So I think what a lot of these retailers are doing is driving online sales that actually bring people to the physical location and using signage and um, call in numbers to be able to actually bring that person out to you and, and deliver your stuff. So even beyond uh, restaurants for curbside ordering, I would encourage you to think about if you have any clients that are in retail um, saying, listen, great, drive online sales, but people want their products. I think um, it's, it's, you know, the, I think a big reason why people go to retail locations versus buying online is because they like the community aspect. They like to, the touch feel, right? And so using online um, to drive inbound, but also knowing that, hey, you can actually come curbside. So giving people that option as well. Yeah, no, great, great comments. And before we flip it back over to our Mindfire friends as we wrap this slide, uh, we are seeing your comments and thank you for them. Uh, there was one just about uh, car dealerships. We, we've got a business model and some thoughts around it that we'd like to share. But before we close out this slide, uh, the, the common theme we're also hearing, right, that there's commonality across these vertical markets. Listen, folks, um, what you really need to take away is there is no cookie cutter approach to any of these. And what's amazing to me, even with the big nationals, you think that they have all their stuff together and they, they have the plan down, and they know what their communications and outreach is, and it's, it's, it's well known and, and their competitors have it too. It's not the case. We are shocked at how fragmented it is. And, and that's why we also kind of position the theme of this print can save, you know, the economy can certainly contribute with the creativity that we've got with what we're seeing across verticals, we can get our hands around a lot of the common elements and take them. And this is what, what you have to challenge your sales teams to do. You have to go out and create these solutions and educate and, and take these solutions across to others. Don't think for a minute that, that these customers have these solutions put together. 
many still at this point, they do not. Yep. They're looking for leadership. There's a void and you can play a significant role in their recovery by taking a leadership role. You gotta be creative, you gotta be aggressive. That would be our message. And we'll flip it back over to our friends at MindFire. Right. So speaking about direct mail, um, here's a great example of uh, one of our customers, uh, National Guard, that we partner with, one of our customers on the East Coast. But uh, they're, they're trying to give student applicants who really aren't ready for college an opportunity to get involved with the National Guard and have their college education paid for. You know, with a student loan issue in North America, uh, that's a nice approach. And we've had great success helping the National Guard across the U.S. This is Hawaii, obviously. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's all driven first touches uh, with a highly personalized uh, direct mail piece that connects with the student applicant. And, uh, you know, we've been really, really successful getting them uh, with not only the, the new recruits, but also the re-ups, keeping folks engaged and staying there. So again, direct mail, innovative use cases, driving them to landing pages, what's most important to you so that the recruitment officers that follow up are very highly targeted. So again, direct mail has been a big component. All right, Dave, let's talk about the fridge deal, one of my personal favorites. Yeah, I'm going to try to do this quickly because I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the time. So this is an idea from our friends over at Summit Print and Mail. Uh, Summit's a uh, fantastic company in Texas. And Marianne, it actually kind of ties back to your QR code thing. Um, it, it ties together print and online through the use of a QR code. And this example that we have here on the screen in a second is uh, using um, a restaurant as an example. It has applicability in other industries, but we're going to show you from the restaurant perspective. So here's how it works, Joe, if you don't mind um, actually going to that screen with the, uh, the picture of it. So in the upper left-hand corner, uh, a direct mail piece is sent with um, this, this ability to be able to remove the paper offer, that little thing that you see there towards the right-hand side. And you take that off and you stick it on your fridge and it has a QR code on it. So what happens then is Marianne can pull out her phone um, and Marianne now knows that the camera, most cameras can read QR codes, right, Marianne? She's nodding, I see her. So you take your camera, you point it at that, um, that cool little pizza uh, with the QR code above it, and then it'll lead you to this online ordering site. And what's cool about the online ordering site is because it's now um, transitioned from the offline direct mail piece to the online, this ordering site, it's electronic, it's actually doing a query in the back end to say, okay, how many children are home at Marianne's house? Um, it, what, what kind of household is this? It's pulling that information in real time and then using that to personalize the offer um, that she can see there on that page. So really cool. If you want to see more, we have actually a video we can show you um, on LinkedIn. I'll throw my contact info in the chat and then message me and I'll send you the video so you can actually see this in progress. Beautiful. Just another innovative way to help. All right, so lots of great ideas so far. It looks like we got about two minutes here um, and, and we wanna turn the table now in the few minutes we have left here to talk about taking action. Um, as Craig, Marianne, Joe, McKenzie, everybody has said today, it's crucial that we act on this information. So I wanna talk for a moment now about how do, we, um, how do we motivate our clients to actually take action? And so the first question I have for the panel, Mac, McKenzie, I think I'm gonna throw this over to you. Um, how do you think we should kickstart demand when so many of our clients have pulled back and are unsure of what they should be doing? How, how would you answer that question? Yeah, so what I would say, again, is be proactive in your approach. One of my favorite things, takeaways from this was what Craig was saying, which is, listen, we're giving you specific ideas, but you need to think, how does this apply to my customers? And going, you know, marketing to them or communicating in a way where you are saying, look, we're partners in this and I'm trying to help you. And I want to help you do this. And here's what we've seen in similar industries. You know, ultimately, you want to communicate in a way that's direct, that's clear, and that most importantly is providing value to them. You're not trying to sell them a new solution. You're trying to genuinely help their business thrive during this downturn. And so I think uh. it's that, that shift there. Beautiful. All right. So what about you, Joe? What are you saying? Yeah, let's segue to uh, an actual program that you can use to get new business, those former customers and prospects in the door. Here's a typical direct mail, email, social media program that's connecting with the target audience, talking about business getting back to business. And we know that as employees come back into the office, they're concerned about illness spreading in the workplace. So the messaging speaks to that, invites them to download 
a business getting the back to business guide. There's that content we spoke of that customers want to see before they set up a meeting with you. And then they created a wonderful, wonderful uh, PDF that had six coaching tips and a bunch of their products. This is just one snapshot of the uh, product lineup, but a bunch of their protection products so that as folks come back, their employees or their customers can feel comfort in knowing that they've taken all the precautions necessary to keep them safe. Marianne, you want to add anything on, on this or any other additional thoughts? No, just from my perspective, you know, the one big tip for the day is, is, is go back and talk to your customers and ask them, number one, you know, what were they working on before? Is that still viable? And, and number two, you know, what are the pain points that their customers are experiencing right now? You've really got to, as you guys know, spend that time with them uh, and help understand that business better. But, you know, Joe, I love your solutions. Uh, we're a big MindFire user at GPA, and uh, you guys just continue to bring all kinds of innovation. So thank Joe, you. Joe, if I can add on to what Marianne said, and by the way, Marianne, thanks for those kind words. Um, you. you know, Joe, you've talked about, uh, and, and Craig, I think you touched on this as well, uh, you know, not assuming that our clients know what they need um, or that they're aware of these solutions. And I think that underscores, for example, the restaurant solution, Joe, that, that we had a few moments ago, both the, the pizza example as well as the one that we showed earlier enabling um, online ordering. Even here at MindFire, and Joe, maybe you can talk to this, you know, that, that came out of discovering, I think, Joe, really from you, discovering that there was a need um, and then us quickly, quickly innovating to be able to create a solution that would meet that need. I'll admit, even from my perspective, I thought, surely there's a solution out there for this already. How could there be space for another solution? I'm sure there's a way they can handle it already. But, but, but to your point, Joe, they, there is clearly a need and we have to get out there as salespeople and engage our customers to understand this and really actively listen. Yeah, and, and to that point, it goes where we started the meeting. You know, when we think in terms of taking action now, I suggested that you sit down with each of your customers and say, coming out of COVID for your revenue recovery, what's the number one critical product, solution, or challenge I can help you solve? If you have that conversation with every one of your customers and prospects, you're going to be amazed at the opportunities you're able to create like we did with the restaurant solution. Real quick, before we move into Q&A, um, I'm curious, final thoughts, Marianne, on taking action now or any other nugget you'd like to throw out to the audience? You know, just the big thing, uh, and I think it goes back to your original quote, uh, you know, let's, let's, you know, leave us alone, those of us that are moving and, and uh, you know, taking the action now. And I think that, uh, you know, if you need help, um, give us a call. You can hit any of us up here on the call, uh, any of our colleagues within the business, but, uh, you know, we're here to help. And, and that's the big thing. So thanks, Joe. Craig? Yeah, you know, uh, great points. Um, I just say that, uh, you know, hope is not a strategy. It's all about uh, taking action. Um, and I like quoting like, like Joe does. Darwin, right? Darwin, a lot of people quote Darwin incorrectly. Darwin did not say that the strong survive. He said those that adapt survive. So it's mm. adapt, take action, be bold. And, and I think that's the challenge in front of us. Let's get out there and let's go sell. Great. Mac, what's your final coaching tip for taking action now for our audience? Just always think in terms of your customer, not what's convenient for you. What's convenient for them? What's going to help them? How can you reframe your thoughts to look at the world through the lens of your customers? Amen. Couldn't have said it better. All right. Well, here's our contact information. And Dave, what are some of those burning questions, or anyone on the team, the panel, or what are some of those burning questions that we might be able to field while we've got a little time left with folks that want to hang around? We still have over several hundred attendees uh, logged in. We'll just take a few questions. And by the way, look at the people on this list. There's a wealth of experience and expertise working with customers like you. Even if you're not our customers, we're happy to share. We'll give you the secret sauce. You just have to go implement it. Uh, so there's the contact information. Feel free to contact any of us. Dave, yeah, so, you know, there's hundreds of questions here, Joe. I mean, there's the common ones like, has this been recorded? Can I get the slides? And the answer to that is yes and yes. Absolutely, we'll provide that to you. Um, there were a lot of questions around, how do I see more of these examples? Uh, we'll get that information out to you folks. Don't worry about that. We'll follow up. Make sure to note here in the chat if you do want something specific, if you haven't already, and we'll make sure we'll get that for you. Um, as far as key questions that have come through, there's, there's just so many. Mackenzie, have you picked out one or two that you think in the time we have left is – 
applicable to the wide group here? I know I'm there's, kicking the ball over to you now. Yeah, no, there's, there's a lot. I think a lot of it, which was really great, is um, most of the interactions were a lot of comments saying that they've, you know, they've seen all these things, they've experienced them. Um, I don't have a specific question. I'm just sifting through. Okay. I was going to say, Mick, Dave, Dave, I saw one on there, and I thought yes. that this would be appropriate for all of us. Sure. Uh, Don is asking, how do you recommend talking to customers? And I know, um, you know we've talked about this a lot since March on how to talk to customers. Um, you know, I'll, I'll feel just a couple things. Um, one is, is where they are. Um, so again, for us, uh, LinkedIn has been a really great platform. Um, you know, the, the webinars, um, our team have gotten really, really good at this one-on-one. -on -one. Handwritten notes, that was my Joe Manos tip of the day. Joe had put something uh, in there and of course we sell paper and plastics and uh, we've encouraged our team to reach out and send this note and just say, hey, I want to see how you are. I want you to know we're here to help. So that's my two cents. Anybody else on how to talk, talk talking to customers or how to do it? Yeah, Marianne, I mean, I think that from, from my perspective, uh, I said this at the beginning, but it's something that we're finding uh, to be true. And it looks like, you know, at GPA, you're doing the same, which is to communicate as much as you can with your customers in all different channels. And in doing that communication, the key is to provide value like we've done for all of you today. And so if you can do this to educate your customers, um, if you need help with webinar strategy, if you want to know how to run events like this, Joe has basically told you, I'll help you. You don't even have to be a customer. Same is true for the GPA team, I'm sure. They'll, they'll help. Raise your hand, come after us, ask for help, and we'll talk to you and see what we can do to get you, get you moving forward. Greg, do you have something you'd like to recommend uh, with that question Marianne raised? Uh, it, it's just a build up on Sam, right? The fundamentals that were true before are true now, right? People, people are looking for that uh, genuine engagement. They're, they're really looking for solutions. Um, and I, I don't mean to be trite with this, but we're leading with help and hope. In everything that we're doing right now, that, that's what this all boils down to. So as genuine, genuine as you are, don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, you'll probably find folks on the other end of the phone, the email, who uh, will welcome the opportunity of, of getting some legitimate uh, support. And, uh, and two, as it always is, right, it's, um, it's many touch points. Go C-level, go mid-level, and, and, and at frontline too, right? Everybody's important. Don't be afraid for those key accounts of yours um, to, to make sure that you're, you're chatting with everybody, engaging genuinely with everybody. You do that. Uh, the, the dollars and cents will take care of themselves. My two cents. I want to just add my personal favorite, educate for free. Um, you know, the three of us from MindFire, we do it religiously every day. Give high value information to your prospects about an innovative solution that's going to help them generate revenue. You'll get that meeting. Mac, what's your final thought on this topic that Marianne raised? I think that you guys have all covered it. I mean, ultimately it's lead with value. It's put yourself in their shoes, stay top of mind, never think you're over, you know, if you're genuinely helping them, they want to hear from you. So just continue to, mm -hmm. to be respectful, know that they're busy too. You know, maybe they're working at home and they've got kids. So if they don't respond the first time, try again, you know, instead of trying thinking that you're hounding them, think, you know, I'm helping them and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I can cut through the noise and get to them so that I can help them. Yep. Beautiful. All right, what do you think, Dave? We've got about two minutes left and we're 10 minutes over, but here's what I'd like to suggest. Number one, um, contact us. We're all here to help. Number two, there's gonna be a part two to this because there's just so much that we could share. We've got four hours of content that we could be showing you different examples, different ways to get to, to help with that revenue recovery. So let us know how we can help. I wanna thank everyone on the panel, Dave, Mackenzie, my teammates, Mary Ann, my family, Craig, my family members, thank you so much, guys, for uh, helping us share today. And uh, again, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We, we uh, couldn't be here without you, and we hope that we can help you uh, uh, recover that revenue and uh, help everyone with that hope and the future opportunities. And Joe, you, you mentioned at the beginning, but let's give everyone a, a pointer again. In a few weeks, we're going to do another panel just like this, bring in additional other voices. So stay yeah. tuned. If you're not on our list, the GPA Mindfire list, make sure to drop your email in the chat uh, because you don't want to miss that. You want to hear from your peers, folks that are actually making this happen, how they're doing it, how they're going to market, how they're selling, how they're crafting solutions. So you want to be on that, that next webinar. Amen. All righty. Well, with Thanks that, to everyone. We'll see you down the road. Have a wonderful day. Have a great rest of the day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank Bye you.